after studying this module, you shall be able to know about the significance of poisonous gases, classification and forensic importance of poisonous gases, and forensic examination of poisonous gases. Toxicology is the study of poisons or more comprehensively, the identification and quantification of adverse outcomes associated with exposures to physical agents, chemical substances and other conditions. One of such agents is gaseous poisons or asphyxiants. Basically, an asphyxiant is a substance that can cause unconsciousness or death by asphyxiation, that is suffocation. Cases of gaseous poisoning are mostly accidental in nature, but that does not exclusively means that homicidal use of gaseous poisons are not reported. Example for the later use can be the use of warfare gases which have been discussed in this module. However, the cases related to poison gases are mostly encountered by the forensic experts are accidental in nature. Gaseous poisons are very rapidly absorbed and consequently produce most rapid effect. While in the cases of solid or liquid poisons, the fatal dose is signified as lethal dose or LD50. The same is indicated as LC50 in the case of gaseous poisons. LC50 or lethal concentration is the standard measure of the noxiousness of the surrounding medium that will exterminate half of the sample population of a specific pest animal in a specified period through exposure by way of inhalation. LC50 is measured in micrograms or milligrams of the material per liter or parts per million, that is ppm, of air or water. It is important to note that lower the amount, more toxic is the material. LC50 values cannot be directly inferred from one species to the other or to humans. Next is classification of poison gases. Poisonous gases or asphyxiants are classified as first, simple asphyxiants. These gases displace oxygen from the ambient air and reduce the partial pressure of available oxygen. Examples include carbon dioxide, nitrogen, aliphatic hydrocarbon gases that is butane, ethane, methane and propane and noble gases such as argon, helium, neon, radon and xenon. Second is respiratory irritants. These gases damage the respiratory tracts by destroying the integrity of the mucosal barrier. Examples include acrolein, ammonia, chloramine, chlorine, formaldehyde, hydrogen sulfide, methyl bromide, methyl isocyanate, oxides of nitrogen, osmium tetraoxide, ozone, phosgene and sulfur dioxide. Heavy metal related gases also come under this category. Example, cadmium fumes, copper fumes, mercury vapors, zinc chloride and zinc oxide. Third is systemic asphyxiants. These are the inert gases and when these gases are bathed in high concentration, they act mechanically by displacing or excluding oxygen. These gases produce significant systemic toxicity by specialized mechanisms. Examples include carbon monoxide, cyanide and smoke. It must be noted that systemic toxicity may also be observed in the case of some simple asphyxiants and respiratory irritants, though it is not the principal feature. Fourth is volatile compounds. Volatile compounds have little or no irritant effect after absorption. They act as an anesthetic agent or toxic to the liver, kidney, etc. Examples are aliphatic hydrocarbons, halogenated hydrocarbons and aromatic hydrocarbons. Now we shall discuss about some notable poisonous gases. 
first is carbon monoxide and the lethal concentration 50 is equal to 3760 parts per million. Carbon monoxide is colorless, tasteless and lighter than air with a garlicky odor. It is highly poisonous gas that is absorbed into the lungs and combines with the hemoglobin of the RBC in the blood and forms a stable compound carboxyhemoglobin. The affinity of hemoglobin for carbon monoxide has 200 to 300 times greater for hemoglobin than that of oxygen. It reduces oxygen content of blood and then of tissues. Next to carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide is the most abundant atmospheric pollutant and is progressively increasing in concentration. Apart from its role as an environmental contaminant, carbon monoxide is responsible for a significant number of deaths encountered in forensic practice. Accidental carbon monoxide poisoning can occur in several other situations apart from domestic exposure. Internal combustion engine exhaust fumes, malfunctioning home heating systems, gas hot water heaters, gas clothes, dryers, charcoal and poorly vented wood or coal stoves, space heaters, gas and kerosene lanterns and fires in buildings are common sources of carbon monoxide. In carbon monoxide poisoning, the color of the skin is cherry red due to carboxyhemoglobin. The color is characteristic of the poisoning but its absence by no means excludes it. Second is carbon dioxide. Lethal concentration 50 is 250 parts per million. Carbon dioxide is colorless, odorless, non-flammable gas which is heavier than air. In its solid form, that is dry ice, it is whitish in color and acts as a corrosive. The carbon dioxide intoxication usually results from the physiological disturbances. The gas may disperse slowly if ventilation is poor. It is used as fire extinguisher. In carbonation of soft drinks as shielding gas during welding processes, in synthesis of urea, dry ice and other organic synthesis. Carbon dioxide poisoning is generally accidental in nature like worker working in deep well, dampened pit, overcrowding in ill ventilated room etc. Third is methyl isocyanate. Lethal concentration 50 is 22 parts per million. Methyl isocyanate or MIC is one of a group of isocyanates, the others being toluene diisocyanate that is TDI and diphenylmethane diisocyanate that is MDI. Methyl isocyanate is a colorless liquid with pungent sweetish odor below 27 degrees Celsius but it becomes gas at 39 degrees Celsius. It is a highly volatile and inflammable in nature. It is an extremely reactive chemical and needs to be stored carefully. Its contact with water results in an exothermic reaction. Methyl isocyanate is produced by heating metal cyanates or by heating NN diphenyl N methyl urea. Methyl isocyanate is generally used in the manufacture of carbamate pesticide and polyurethrase articles like plastics, urethane foam, adhesives, etc. Methyl isocyanate causes carbamylation at biochemical level. Methyl isocyanate is a powerful respiratory irritant. Even brief exposure at high concentrations may cause severe injury, burns or even death. Fourth is hydrogen sulfide. Lethal concentration 50 is 712 parts per million. Hydrogen sulfide is in general referred as sewer gas and a well-known neurotoxic leading to olfactory nerve paralysis and loss of consciousness at a relatively low dose. Hydrogen sulfide is a colorless, toxic and flammable gas. 
it is responsible for the foul odor of rotten eggs and pretentiousness. It is formed during decomposition of organic substances containing sulfur. Hydrogen sulfide readily diffuses through the tissues. The toxicity of hydrogen sulfide is similar with that of hydrogen cyanide. It forms a complex bond with iron in the mitochondrial cytochrome enzymes, thereby blocking oxygen from binding and stopping cellular respiration. It acts as a cytochrome oxidase poison, blocking the electron transport chain, those catalyzes the reduction of molecular oxygen to water. Although very pungent at first, it quickly reduces the sense of smell. So potential victims may be unaware of its presence until it is too late resulting to accidental death. In hydrogen sulfide poisoning, putrefaction of dead body is rapid. Fifth is aliphatic hydrocarbons. Ethane is an odorless gas which is used as a refrigerant and as a component of natural gas. It is methane also known as swamp gas. However, which is the major component of natural gas. Both are odorless gases and produce simple asphyxiation at high concentrations. Conversion of domestic gas from coal gas to natural gas has significantly reduced mortality from domestic gas leaks since methane is much less toxic as compared to carbon monoxide. Methane being odorless, a stenching agent is deliberately added to domestic gas so that leaks can be immediately recognized. It is important to remember that a buildup of methane resulting in 4.8 to 13.5 percent concentration in air constitutes an explosive mixture which can be ignited by a flame or even a tiny spark. Most explosions in mines as well as homes using natural gas as fuel occur because of this reason. Butane, liquefied petroleum gas, propane and propylene have a faint petroleum-like odor and may be stenched with mercaptans for transport and storage. Butane is often abused by adolescents in the form of inhalation. Liquefied petroleum gas is used as a domestic, industrial and automotive fuel. Propylene is a raw material in polypropylene, isopropyl alcohol, isopropyl benzene, acetone and propylene oxide manufacturing. Most of the aliphatic hydrocarbon gases act as simple asphyxiants in addition to additional specific toxicity. Sixth is ammonia, lethal concentration 50 is 4000 parts per million. Ammonia is a colorless gas with pungent odor. It condenses to a liquid at 33.4 degree Celsius. The chemical formula is NH3. It is an extremely irritant gas with a penetrating odor. It is highly water soluble forming ammonium hydroxide which is an alkaline corrosive. Aqueous ammonia is a colorless liquid with a strong alkaline reaction and a penetrating pungent odor. When heated to decomposition, it emits toxic fumes of ammonia and oxides of nitrogen. While poisoning with ammonia is not very common, most of the cases reported are suicidal in nature. Since the solution or gas, even when weak, has a distinct irritant smell, accidental poisoning is unlikely. Obviously, its properties preclude its choice for murder. However, ammonia is being used as a spray to incapacitate victims of robbery. Accidental poisoning is common as it is mistaken for medicines. However, homicidal poisoning are rare. Poisoning by inhalation of ammonia vapor is common. Sometimes caustic soda is thrown over the face and body producing chemical burns. Seventh is phosgene. Lethal concentration 50 is 5 parts per million. Phosgene is a colorless gas, heavier than air with an odor of freshly cut 
decay. At high concentrations, the gas has an odor described as suffocating, strong, stifling or pungent. At low temperature or when compressed, phosgene condenses to a colorless to light yellow, non-combustible, highly toxic, fuming, volatile liquid that produces poisonous vapor and sinks in water. Phosgene is hydrolyzed in the body to hydrochloric acid which produces a systemic inflammatory response. It also stimulates the synthesis of lipoxygenase derived leukotrienes causing pulmonary edema. Further, phosgene increases pulmonary vascular permeability leading to increased fluid accumulation in the intestinal and alveolar compartments. The ability of the lymphatics to clear the excess fluid is exceeded, resulting in gas diffusion abnormalities and pulmonary edema. Phosgene was used as part of chemical warfare during World War I. Prepared for the first time in 1812, phosgene has a large-scale presence in World War I as an asphyxiant war gas. Eighth is phosphine, lethal concentration 50 is 20 parts per million. Phosphine is also known as hydrogen phosphide or phosphorated hydrogen. It is a colorless flammable gas with an odor of garlic or decaying fish. Phosphine is commonly used as a fumigant, grain preservative in the form of aluminium phosphide, rat poison in the form of zinc phosphide. Phosphine produces widespread organ damage due to cellular hypoxia as a result of binding with cytochrome oxidase, an important respiratory enzyme. The organs with the greatest oxygen requirements appear to be especially sensitive to damage and include the brain, kidneys, heart and liver. Phosphine, when inhaled by human beings, results in severe pulmonary edema. Due to the release of phosphine gas in contact with moisture, symptoms of severe gastrointestinal tract irritation are produced that cause cardiovascular collapse and death. Suicidal poisoning is common with this agent, especially in the northern part of India. Rarely accidental poisoning may occur to workers working in grain elevators, warehouses and grain freighter, etc. Phosphine, when it comes in contact with air and moisture, it reacts with acidic media of stomach and releases phosphine gas, which is readily absorbed from gastrointestinal tract by simple diffusion. Phosphine is a protoplasmic poison interfering with enzymes and protein synthesis. In animal studies, phosphine has been shown to cause non-competitive inhibition of cytochrome oxidase of myocardial mitochondria. Ninth is hydrogen cyanide. Lethal concentration 50 is 40 parts per million. Salts of cyanide releases hydrogen cyanide in stomach due to action of hydrochloric acid and then absorbed as cyanide ion. Cyanide occurs as a gas or liquid or solid. In its gaseous state, it is referred to as hydrogen cyanide. Hydrogen cyanide is a colorless flammable gas with a faint bitter almond odor. Hydrogen cyanide is occasionally used for fumigation. Deaths can occur from negligence. Industrial and laboratory mishaps involving this chemical are also not infrequent. Cyanogen and cyanogen halides, cyanogen bromide, cyanogen chloride and cyanogen iodide release hydrogen cyanide and have been used as military chemical warfare agents. During the first world war, hydrogen cyanide was used as a war gas but was quickly replaced by other more effective war gases such as mustard gas. Tenth is chlorine. Lethal concentration 50 is 293 parts per million. Chlorine is a greenish yellow gas with a pungent odor. Chlorine is not found free in nature due to its reactivity 
with other chemicals. Instead, it is found as sodium chloride in landlocked lakes, as rock salt in underground deposits in brines and in natural deposits of sylvite and carnelite. Chlorine is an extremely active oxidizing agent and causes rapid and extensive destruction of organic tissue. It combines with tissue water to produce hydrochloric acid, producing injury and reactive oxygen species. Swimming pool chlorinator tablets or pellets may result in chlorine gas exposure. Chlorine is used to manufacture a number of chemicals including solvents such as carbon tetrachloride, trichloroethylene, tetrachloroethylene and methylene chloride, pesticides and herbicides, plastics, vinyl chloride, etc. It is also used in making refrigerants and propellants such as halocarbons and methyl chloride. It is used extensively in pulp mills where wood chips are processed into pulp as part of the paper manufacturing process. Chlorine is also employed in purifying drinking and swimming water. For sanitation of industrial and sewage wastes and other disinfecting uses, it has been used as a poisonous gas for military purposes under the name bertholite. Most cases of poisoning are accidental arising out of domestic or industrial exposure. Sometimes exposure occurs at swimming pools where chlorine is often used as a disinfectant. Next is warfare gases. War gases are the agents used to kill, injure or incapacitate the enemies. In civil conditions, these gases are used to disperse the unruly mob. The history of war gases begins with First World War where more than 1 lakh people died and about 1.2 million affected due to use of chlorine, phosgene and nitrogen mustard. In Second World War, the Germans developed and used number of nerve agents like taboon, serine and soman together referred to as G military agents whereas the English developed VX that is nerve gas in 1952. Next is classification of warfare gases. First is lacrimators that is tear gas, chloracetophenone that is CAP, bromobenzyl cyanide BBC and ethyl iodoacetate KSK are the examples of lacrimators. Second lung irritants, chlorine, phosgene and diphosgene are the examples of lung irritants. Third vesicants, example is mustard gas and lewisite. Fourth sternutators, example is diphenylamine chloroarsine. DM, diphenyl chloroarsine DA, diphenyl cyanoarsine DC, etc. Fifth is paralysins, carbon monoxides and hydrogen sulfide. Nerve gases such as tabun, sarin, soman and VX. Next is forensic analysis of some poisonous gases. Basically, gaseous poisons are isolated by the distillation process or more usually by sampling the headspace above the sample held in a closed container. Besides, other methods are discussed. First is Conway microdiffusion technique. Conway microdiffusion assembly is of a brink type. Polypropylene cells with clear polystyrene covers having an outermost annular sealing well, an intermediate annular well for the sample and the liberating agent and a center well for the reagent, detection reagent which is used to trap the diffusing gas or vapor. Now we shall go through a table which shows the poison, sealing or the liberating agent, absorbent or reactant and the detection. First is carbon monoxide. Sealing or the liberating agent is 10% sulfuric acid. In this case, absorbent is palladium chloride solution, 
which is 0.5 percent in two normal HCl acts as detection agent. Detection, palladium chloride solution turns gray to black. Second poison is cyanide. Liberating agent is 10 percent sulfuric acid. Reactant, 10 percent sodium hydroxide solution. It absorbs HCN gas. Detection, alkaline extract is subjected to Prussian blue test, ferrous sulfate and hydrochloric acid. Prussian blue PPT or coloration is seen. Next poison is sulfur dioxide. Liberating agent is 10 percent sulfuric acid. Reactant is 10 percent sodium hydroxide and detection formation of black PPTs with lead acetate. Second is test for detection of phosphine. 5 to 10 ml amount of gastric extract or 5 to 10 grams of macerated tissue of liver is taken into a steam distillation flask to which an equal quantity of water is added and then acidified with dilute hydrochloric acid or sulfuric acid followed by heating up to 50 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes. The distillate is collected in an ice cold receiver containing 5 ml of 1 percent silver nitrate solution by dipping the adapter into it. If phosphine is present, the solution will turn black. For confirmation, 5 ml of concentrated nitric acid is added to the black precipitate and boiled till the solution becomes clear. Then 5 ml of ammonium molybdate solution is added and heated for 1 minute. Formation of yellow precipitate confirms the presence of phosphine. A variation of this test involves placing lead acetate filter paper over the mouth of the distillation flask containing the sample. The flask is heated for 15 minutes at 50 degree Celsius. Phosphine will blacken the silver nitrate paper while hydrogen sulphide will blacken both the papers. Next is carbon monoxide detection in blood. Two small porcelain evaporating dishes are taken and 1 ml of normal blood into one dish and 1 ml of suspected blood in another dish is decanted. Both the dishes are heated gradually. The normal blood will change to a brown black whereas the blood having carbon monoxide will become brick red. This test is sensitive to 40 percent carbon monoxide. In another test, a drop of test sample blood is diluted with 10 to 15 ml of water. Control sample blood is also diluted in the same manner. Blood containing carbon monoxide is pink. This test is sensitive to 50 percent carbon monoxide. We will conclude this module with summary. Asphyxiants are gases that cause tissue hypoxia which means they are gases that deprive body tissues of oxygen. Carbon dioxide is a colorless, odorless, non-irritating gas that is widely used as a fire extinguisher in ice making factories and occupational or recreational settings. Cyanides are utilized in mining operations, photographic materials, the production of plastics, pigments and dyes and often used as fumigant pesticides. During fires, victims can also inhale significant carbon monoxide and cyanide gases which may cause synergistic toxicity in human. Next is methyl isocyanate. Methyl isocyanate was involved in one of the most devastating gas disasters which occurred in Bhopal, Madhya Pradesh in 1984 leaving more than 2,000 people dead and more than 2 lakh injured. The incident occurred in a pesticide division of Union Carbide Company manufacturing carburide for which methyl isocyanate is required. This deadly chemical was stored in huge double walled stainless steel tanks, one of which burst on the night of December 2, 1984. More than 24,000 kg of methyl isocyanate gas escaped over the next several hours into the atmosphere forming an 
ominous white cloud that floated rapidly over the surrounding heavily populated neighborhood killing thousands in their sleep and incapacitating several thousand more. Butane is used as a raw material for automobile fuel in organic synthesis and as a solvent, refrigerant and aerosol. Propane is used as a raw material in organic synthesis, as a component of industrial and domestic fuels, as an extractant, as a solvent, as a refrigerant and in the manufacture of ethylene. Incomplete combustion of these agents can release carbon monoxide into the ambient air. Ammonia has greater tendency than other alkalis to penetrate and damage the iris and to cause burns and cataracts in cases of severe exposure. Mixing of ammonia with hypochloride bleach results in the formation of chloramine which causes a toxic pneumonitis that is pulmonary edema. Accidental and suicidal poisoning due to phosphine have been reported involving the consumption of rat pastes containing zinc phosphide. Some of these brands are marketed in tubes that look very similar to toothpaste tubes leading to accidental use.